What's up guys, today we've got a really awesome episode on how to calculate your tax returns which is so much fun because obviously as an accounting student I get asked it all the time but no more because today you're going to know how to do it for yourself and it's going to be so cool so let's go Okay, we are calculating our normal tax Importantly, we are called natural persons so we're not a company for this the sake of this lesson, we are natural persons. And our tax period will always run from the 1st of March to the 28th of Feb. Obviously, if you pay a provisional tax, that means you pay semi-annually, so there are two payments. Basically, the process is the same, except obviously you make two payments instead of one. Okay, noise. So, normal tax is calculated as your taxable income. Then, what you do is you plug that taxable income into your tax table rate, and you can go into the SARS website and find it, but we're gonna go through how to do that. And then we subtract our rebates, and we subtract any employee's tax we might have paid or been withheld and that is your normal tax okay cool so let's get into our taxable income which is the big boy section of your normal tax and your taxable income is made up of your gross income subtract your exempt income to give you your income as defined less your deductions and then plus your cgt your capital gains tax and that will give you your taxable income okay cool so now we're going to go through each of those elements Okay, we're first going to look at gross income. Gross income has a proper definition. It is defined as the total amount in cash otherwise received by or accrued to a taxpayer, excluding receipts of capital nature. Okay, I think we can all understand what total amount is. So let's go cash or otherwise. That's quite important. Cash or otherwise is saying not just your salary, which we obviously know is going to be taxed, but things like fringe benefits, where maybe my employer not only pays me a salary, but also gives me the right to use this laptop. That thing is beneficial to me. So it's going to be included as a fringe benefit into my gross income. Then received by or accrued to. The important principle there is you always recognize income at the early of receipt or accrual so if for example I invoice a client out even though I haven't received that money yet that's still that invoice amount is included into my gross income and then excluding receipts of capital nature capital in nature basically we're looking at the principle of the tree versus the fruit and you can think of the tree as this income earning structure so it generates the fruit which then earns the revenue and so for an example if we have a house that we rent out to people the house is the income earning structure right and it generates this fruit the rental income so the tree here is capital in nature won't be included into your gross income and the fruit the rental income is going to be included into our gross income so for example if we sell this tree we sell the house that receipt the money we receive is not going to be included into our gross income it's going to be taxed as a capital gains tax whereas the rental income is it going into our gross income okay nice and now we're going to look at the exempt income still part of taxable income we have the step less exempt income now exempt income is the income included first into our gross income and then either reduced or removed entirely and that just depends on what the exemption is so i'll give you an example if you got 20,000 rand dividends this year that is obviously going to go into my gross income it's cash but then in terms of section 10 then i get a hundred percent exemption as in i had 20,000 my gross income and now i subtract 20,000 if you've invested in a foreign company if you earn greater than 10 percent shares then it's a hundred percent deduction and less than 10 percent it is times 25 over 40 so for example, if I earned 20,000 Rand from Google in dividends, that 20,000 is included into my gross income, it's income, and okay, sorry, important principle, as South Africans we are taxed on worldwide income. So any income from any country that we earn, we are taxed residents in SA, you are taxed on all of it. So I've earned income from Google, 20,000 Rand, that's included, and let's say I earn 2% of the shares, which would be awesome, but it's also less than 10%. So my exemption then in the next line is that 20,000 times 25 over 45 and that's how exemptions work and if you want to know maybe you get other exemptions then you can have a look at section 10 and the income tax act still in taxable income remember now that we had gross income less exempt income that gave us income as defined now we're going to deal with deductions cool deductions are our best friend and that you can think of them as your expenditure that you incur in your business and that's the most important part of the expenditure definition so in section 11a there's a fancy schmancy definition that says it's your expenditure and losses actually incurred during the year of assessment in the production of income and not of a capital nature but the thing i want to draw the attention to is in the production of income i'm going to call it ipo 
Just know it stands for in the production of income. <laughs> in the production of income basically means that your expenditure that you incur has to be correlated with your business or your income earning activities. So what that means is like maybe as a, if you're a freelancer and you need to use a laptop, well good for you because a deduction you can get is on your laptop. In terms of section 11E, so if it's less than 7,000 Rand, you get a 100% deduction. If it's greater than 7,000, then you get a certain write-off period. So section 11E I think applies to most people. It's things like movable items that aren't used in machinery, things like laptops, or you know, even if you use your cell phone a lot for work, you could get a section 11 e allowance. Other things, if you, maybe you do use machinery directly, I don't know if you have a candle making business and you use this big candle making machine, you'll get a section 12 c allowance or deduction where if it's new, it's 40% in the first year and then 20% onwards. And if it's old, then it's 20%. As in like if it's second hand, then it's 20% per year. And so those are the examples of the sort of deductions you could get. Another cool thing, if you are a freelancer, then rental income, if you use this space, for example, I use the space and I use it wholly for my business to conduct my business, then I get a deduction. Whatever percentage of this room is in the house, I get a deduction from rent. Very cool. So I think it's always nice to be aware of the things that we can actually deduct from our gross income. It's very cool. But yeah, as I said, it's very important to know in production of income has to be linked to your business expenditure. So no, you can't claim back pet insurance or something unless your pet is somehow involved in your business. So no like household items, it has to be used directly in your business. And then the last thing of still on taxable income, we're gonna add capital gains tax. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard capital gains tax in relation to things like Bitcoin and stocks and that sort of thing. Well, cool. So remember we're talking about the tree versus the fruit. Now we're talking about how to deal with the tree. So for example, a house. What happens when we sell our house? And capital gains is calculated as your proceeds less your base cost. And your proceeds consist of your selling price, so how much I sell the asset for, less the Section 8 for a recruitment. And what that is, like I won't go too much into it, but basically if you had deductions that you claimed off a certain asset, so for example if it was a laptop, the Section 8 for a is basically recouping, so adding back into your gross income, the deductions that you would have claimed. And it's basically to balance the tax scales. Again, I know that sounds complex. So we're just going to look at it in terms of a house now. So it's proceeds, we'll take it as a selling price then. Then we subtract our base cost, which again has a fancyish manchier definition and it's expenditure less your allowances that you would have claimed on the asset. So the allowances I talk about are like the section 11E and section 12C mentioned before in your deductions. But for the purposes of this explanation, I'm going to say it's the selling price minus the cost price. I think that will make more sense. Luckily for you guys, a CGT capital gains tax doesn't often affect you because it excludes most personal use assets. But the things that it does include are your house. So for your house, you get a primary residence exclusion. So that means any proceeds up to the value of 2 million Rand will be excluded. So if I sell my house for 6 million and it cost 3 million the 6 million proceeds minus the base cost 3 million so I have 3 million left over then I get a primary residence exclusion of 2 million therefore I have 1 million left over and I'm going to be taxed on that amount so this exclusion is pretty nice but apart from that most personal use assets aren't taxed so you will only be taxed on your house and then weird things like if you have a boat that exceeds 10 meters and an airplane that exceeds 450 kilograms then you will end up being taxed but otherwise I don't think you really have to worry about the capital gains tax. Okay so the principle here is once you've calculated in the case of the house, say we had left over the proceeds minus the uh, base cost was 1 million rand. What happens to that 1 million rand? It's not directly added into your gross income. First of all, as a natural person, we get a 40,000 rand exclusion. So that's just a once off, we just deduct that off our total capital gains. Okay, cool. And then because we're a natural person, it's included then into our taxable income at 40%. So whatever that value is, that now is going into our taxable income. Cool. So it's not the 960,000, it's at the 40%. If you're a company just out of interest, you don't get the annual exclusion of 40,000 and your inclusion rate is higher at 80%. One of the things about capital gains tax is that people generally prefer to argue that something is capital in nature because if you think about it, the inclusion into your taxable income is 40% of that gain rather than 400%. So your effective interest rate will be the 40% of that value and then times by whatever your tax rate is. So it's much smaller inclusion. Okay, awesome. So now we know that our taxable income consists of gross income, which we know also includes things like fringe benefits, which are non-cash. Then we deduct our exempt income, which we know are things like dividends. To give us our income, we deduct our deductions, which are things that are linked to our business. And then we add our capital gains tax, which 
generally doesn't apply to the average Joe unless you're selling your house. But if you are interested, if it applies to you, have a look at SAR's website. It's super informative. And that gives us our taxable income. But that's not all. So remember, that was step one, taxable income. Step two is now plugging that taxable income into the tax tables. So if I worked out that my taxable income resulted in 220,000 rand, what I do now is I go to the SARS website, I say, or well, Google tax tables, 2021 year assessment. And I scroll down and I plug that in. There's a bracket that says if I earn between a certain figure, then I plug it into the certain formula there. So 220,000, if you guys want to check it out, I, I say that's in the 2021 year of assessment. That formula looks like. And so they're saying the tax I'm going to pay is 40,728. Okay, cool. And I think a lot of people would stop there and be like, uh, mm, that's a lot of tax. But no, you're actually very lucky because this is where we get into step three, which is rebates. Rebates are so cool. It's just like a gift to the government. Like you can just pay less tax. And um, so say we earned that 40,728. We don't stop there. So if you're below the age of 65, we get a primary rebate just for years. And that is, this year it's 14,958, just a solid, it's gone, it's just deducted. If you're older than that, they, so between 65 and 75, there's a secondary rebate, and then 75 and above, it's a tertiary rebate, and that's all accumulative. So it'd be the 49,58 plus the secondary plus the tertiary. It's quite nice. And then also what might be applicable to you is section 6A or 6B. Okay, and I know that means absolutely nothing to you, but it's your medical aid rebates. So if you're part of a medical aid, you get, in terms of section 6A, I think it's like 332 rand or something this year, every month per the dependent. So if it's just you on your medical aid, it's 332 rand times 12. And then SARS does tell you maybe it's an extra 200 per additional dependent. And then, so it's 332 plus 200 times 12. And that is just deducted straight off. Your 6B applies to additional medical expenses that maybe weren't covered. So then there's a whole formula for that. And if you're interested, maybe like maybe you incurred some expenditure that you're like, well, I want a deduction for that and medical expenditure. Then you would go search SARS section 6B and they give you a nice little formula um, to calculate what your rebate would be. Also, if you have foreign income, you get a thing called the section 6 quat rebate. But if you have any questions on that, refer to SARS or me in the comments. Okay, nice. And once you've done all those rebates, the last thing that you'd look at is your employee's tax. And the employee's tax is the tax that your employer would have calculated for you. And if you're earning other income besides your salary, obviously you might have to pay a little bit more tax. So what this does is basically you're just deducting what was withheld from your salary by your employer in terms of PAYE. Okay, awesome. And honestly, guys, it is that simple to calculate your tax. So let's just run through it quickly. We know that our tax that we pay to SARS is going to be your taxable income, which consists of your gross income, minus exempt income, minus your deductions, plus your CGT. You plug that into your tax tables to get your tax you're paying, and then less your rebates, your primary, your section 6A, 6B, 6 quart vibes. Look to section 6 for your rebates. Less your employee's tax and that will give you your normal tax that you're paying over to SARS. I hope that makes sense to you. And if you have any particular tax questions that you may want to know, I'm very happy to answer them. Tax is so awesome and it makes me really excited. So actually, that'll be really cool. But anyways, hope you guys have a great day.